Hey, so let's launch right into uh, prayer before we start here, shall we? Maybe it'll focus me a little bit. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much this morning for the opportunity, Lord, to uh, to come in your into your presence, Father. Lord, we we thank you for your your work in our lives. We thank you for your presence and your and your um, your forever. Uh, attention to our lives and every detail of our life. Pray, Father, that you would bless this time this morning, that you would do your work, Father, that it wouldn't be my words, but it would be yours instead, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you would bless this time that we have today in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we wanted to, yes. So, if you've enjoyed this class and you have someone in mind that you think might be interested in taking this class also, this class will be starting up again in February of next year. And this is Connect Sunday. We have a table out there, actually. The Restoration Ministries has a table out there that is, that, that's promoting this class or that's giving information about this class. So if you have someone that you'd like to send to that table, uh, you can send them to that, to that table and, and they can gather information about the, the next class as well as some other things that are going in, going on in Restoration Ministries. But and, and by all means, go out there between services and wander around uh, the tables and see what sort of groups and things are, are going on this fall as well. So other than that, we wanted to announce that we have no other announcements. That's why we have a blank doohickey out there. So... If you remember back in July 15th, you might have remembered back in July 15th when, when Terry Wardle was here, he came and he spoke to us about formational prayer and he um, demonstrated the simple prayer model with Sue McMillan and uh, he demonstrated the first three steps of the uh, simple prayer model and uh, it was, it was uh, impactful and it was wonderful and um, I just wanted to remind you that, or I just wanted to let you know that we're, we're actually, there was a, a question to Terry that day. He said, someone said, well, you said that this was the first three steps. What do we do after that? How do we go on to the rest of the simple prayer model? Well, he said, uh, yeah, I think what he said yeah, is you'll have to go to the conference to get, to, the re to get the rest of that. Well, it was true. He did go through that in the, in the conference. But he, uh, and also we'll be covering that here today. We'll be, we'll be adding a little a little something to it, or we'll be changing, not changing, we'll be adding a little something to it, and I'll, I'll show you what that is here in a minute. So, what is the simple prayer model? The simple prayer model is simply a simple prayer, or it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, a uh, tool that we can use in, in lots of different areas, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute, but... Um, First and foremost is the simple prayer model is, is so simple as a matter of fact that you don't necessarily have to go or have a person uh, go into a safe place in order to do the simple prayer model. Um, you don't necessarily have to be in a counseling setting. Uh, you can do the simple prayer model uh, with a with a one-on-one -on -one situation or with you and a couple of other folks. You can you can do that with a one with a two a one-on-two or a one-on-three. You can use the simple prayer model in lots of different areas. Poor Keith and Nate with the you guys bring your sunglasses. No, love it. Have you guys noticed though how in the spring when we did this the sunlight when we started here now at the same time isn't that amazing how God does this. <laughs> well, you've had you've had it, but it started over here, and you had those ones over there. You see those against the wall? You had those ones. Anyway, sorry, a little distracted. Sorry. <laughs> I have to tack my feet to the floor. Okay, so where can we use the simple prayer book? Well, first and foremost, uh, every Sunday at the end of every service, Pastor Brady invites the altar ministry team up to the front. Uh, he invites group leaders, altar ministry team, pastors and leaders up to the front, and he is looking for those people to come up and, and pray for people. That's an amazing and a, and a wonderful opportunity to use the simple prayer model. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, you'll be doing you'll be doing a little more than what you see most of the folks there in, in the at the altar doing on most Sundays, which is a, which is wonderful. Uh, I, I want to encourage you guys. Pastor David Grothy right now is the. Should I do this? Pastor David Grothy is the uh, oversees the altar ministry. Oversees altar ministry. Now that you have gone through this process that you've gone through here, both today and the, the months be, and the months prior, you know lots, and there, you've got lots of tools to be able to use. So I, I would uh, invite you to go to Pastor David Grothy and say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd really be interested in, in adding myself or, or you adding me to the altar ministry team. And he'll sit down with you and talk to you about what the altar ministry team is, what it isn't. And he will um, uh, interview you and ask you some questions and things. And then he'll sign you up for the altar ministry team. And there you go, you're, you're on the altar ministry team. One of the things that he'll stress there is, listen, altar ministry is not a counseling session. It's not a place where you give prophecy, and it's not a place where you where you uh, dig deep into the person's past, and you start taking them in the safe place, and you start drawing out the deep wounds and things like that. Uh, altar ministry is a place where the simple prayer model, as a matter of fact, is a, is a wonderful thing to use there because it is just that. It's a, it's a simple format to walk through some very powerful prayers where God can reach in and touch a person and, and do some serious work. So you can use it there at the altar. You can also use it in the foyer with a friend. You know, you're walking through the, the foyer one day and a friend walks up to you and they start talking to you. And right in the middle of a conversation, you begin to discern that your friend is struggling with something. So you say, wow, I could, I could use a simple prayer model right here. And you could. You could walk right through the simple prayer model right there in the, in the foyer. You can also do it on the telephone with a family member or a friend. You're on the telephone and you're talking. And uh, believe it or not, God works through technology. And he can touch a person through technology over the telephone, over the computer, through Skype, whatever you'd like to do. Lots of different possibilities there. You can use it in the office or at your work somewhere. Um, I had, I've had it on a number of occasions. People walk into my office and they'll sit down and they'll just be talking. And the next thing I know, I notice or discern that there's something going on with this person. And they probably would be very uh, thankful if I were to pray for them so I can walk right into the simple prayer model there as well. And then we can do it during communion. What? During communion? What do you mean by that? Well, Pastor Brady has turned... The, and rightfully so, he has begun to turn the attention of the congregation and all of us away from the band and the uh, person standing up there giving the sermon. He's turned to hit our attention, he's purposely turned our attention away from those people towards instead the resurrected Christ, which is where it's supposed to be. So in doing that, he sees the importance of celebrating the Lord's Supper just about every Sunday. Just about every Sunday now this year you'll be seeing the Lord's Supper and from this point, you know, for the foreseeable future. And often Pastor Brady will do the communion in the beginning of the service or other times he'll do it towards the end of the service after the sermon is already, is already finished. So what, we're, what we, we can use as Restoration Ministry, we can be there and we can take the initiative as a matter of fact and we can um, practice this simple prayer model there in the church while we're celebrating communion. Often when Pastor Brady finishes with his sermon, like last week, if, if you were here last week for, for uh, church, he finished with his sermon and he said, okay, now go and collect your communion elements, come back to your seat, and then right there at your seat, celebrate communion with a few people around you. In other words, go to these complete strangers and invite them into your space here and receive communion with them. That was a, a stirring time for my wife and I last week. We were serving communion last week and we were standing there and we'd finished serving communion. Everyone went back over and sat down and we looked over here at the place where we were sitting. We hadn't walked back yet because we were still serving communion. So we put our, our the elements, the trays down, and we picked up our own elements. And as we walked over to our seats, there were these two ladies. It was two ladies. There were two ladies standing over there, and they were they were all by themselves. They were just sort of standing there and not doing anything. And one of them actually was crying. So we walked up and we and I said, "Hey, um, can I lead us through communion?" 
Would it be okay if I let us through communion? And they, they both said, oh, yeah, that would be terrific, yeah. So they gathered around, and we just, I prayed for them. Pastor Brady will often finish up by saying, listen, we're going to celebrate communion now, so do it there in your community, and you're gathered together with a few other people. Pray for them, encourage them, and celebrate communion together. So we did. We gathered together with these couple of other folks, and we, I prayed for all of us. Uh, I, we received communion. I asked them if they needed prayer, and we, we walked through this little process. And it was really, it was a very touching time. And God really worked in this, in especially this one lady who was especially touched by the, uh, the opportunity to celebrate communion. So here's what I want you to do. Because this is, we're going to, I'm going to walk through and I'm going to teach about this for just a moment. And then I'm going to demonstrate it with a, uh, a couple of the table facilitators. And then I'm going to turn it over to you as a class. And I want you guys to practice this there at your table. It's important that we practice these things in a place where we feel safe and we can do it and we can make mistakes if we want to. It's okay. We may not necessarily get it perfect, but I just want you to, to uh, practice it where you're, where you're uh, comfortable and okay. And if you're at a table all by yourself, then you might need to add yourself to another table so that you can uh, participate. But right now, what I want you to do is take a moment and divide your table up into either groups of two or groups of three. Okay, so groups of two or groups of three. Ready, go. So I'm going to give you another minute. You guys figure out who in your little group of three or two is going to take the initiative to uh, serve communion to the other folks. Ready? Go. <laughs> tons and tons of opportunity to do this in the future and we just need to check and see if the uh, we just need to check is that better good we just need to check so I want you to imagine for a second so you're sitting in church one Sunday you're in your row pastor Brady has just finished with his sermon and he looks out at the congregation and he says okay we're going to celebrate communion now so I want you to follow the instructions of the ushers and go receive your elements. And when you come back after receiving your elements, come back to your seat and gather together in small groups and receive communion together. Okay? So we're imagining here now. Okay? So I'm sitting there in my seat and I stand up, the usher directs me, and I walk out of my row and I go over and I receive my communion elements and I come back to my seat and I'm standing there in my seat and there's these two people sitting next to me perfect strangers, but there's these two people, maybe my wife is sitting here, and I turn to these folks over here and I say, hey, would you like me to lead us through communion? What do you think most of the people in the church are going to say when someone walks up to them and says, would you like me to lead you through communion? Yeah. 
I guarantee you that 90% of the people in the congregation are uncomfortable with the thought of leading themselves or leading somebody else through communion. So here we have about 70, think of this, this really excites me. Here we have 70 people who right now are learning about how to walk through communion and to include something in there that, uh, hi Tamara. <laughs> and to include something in there that is, um, that is a, 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 an extra part, a part of it that um, will really minister to people as well, the, the simple prayer model. So you've gotten back to, you've come back to your, to your seat and you're sitting, standing there and you turn to the two folks next to you and you say, would you like me to lead us through communion? And they look at you and they say, yes, we'd love for you to do that. So what do you do then? Well, before you begin, you gather together as best you can in your little seats there. And, you know, it's kind of, it's a little tight, but it's not as tight as it usually is, or, or sometimes is. But anyway, you get together in your little seats there, and you kind of establish some, some ground rules. Hey, Kathy, you establish some ground rules. Hey, is this okay? Are we, are we too close? Are you comfortable with this? Are you okay? And if during this time that we, that we pray and we're doing communion, if I, if I um, feel led to, to put my hand on your shoulder, is it okay if I do that? You know, obviously all of these things are optional. All of these things, well, no, not all of these things. Some of these things are optional. Asking the person if, if you can put their hand on, the show, on their shoulder, that might be optional. But anyway, you'll get the basic idea. You have there, by the way, table facilitators, if you haven't already handed this out, you should hand, hand out your simple prayer model dealing that you have there in your, in your folder, please. So you would ask them, is it okay if I feel led during this prayer to, uh, during this time of communion, if I uh, feel led to put my hand on, me, on your shoulders, is it okay if I do that? Yes, of course it is. And then, look at these other couple or three people and, um, and, and let them know that, you're, that you are, that really we're, we're, we're looking to be ministered to by the Holy Spirit. So stop them at the moment and stop there for just a second and let them know that. You know, let's pause here for just a minute and let the Holy Spirit minister to us. And then, when you, I guarantee you, when you bow your head and look down at the floor, this is what they're going to do as well. And maybe when you bow your head and look down at the floor, you might have your Bible in your hand, or a piece of paper, or maybe you don't have anything, and you, you, you're just going to listen then for the Holy Spirit to give you something to bless these people. Wait, I need to go back for a minute, okay? So, you've come back into the... Into the um, the row, and you've gathered into this little group, and you've established uh, safe distance between everybody. At that point, you reach out and you say, "Hi, my name is Mike. It's good to meet you. What's yours? Hi, Nate. Good to meet you. Hi, Christina. Good to meet you." That way, you have their name in your head, okay? And then, when you go to the point where now, let's wait on the Holy Spirit, let Him minister to us. You can stop for a moment, look down at the ground, and ask God to give you a blessing for these two people. Lord, would you give me a blessing for Christina? Would you give me a blessing for Nate? And then listen for, remember the class that I think I taught on hearing from the Holy Spirit. Remember, he uses things like inspiration and insight. Well, inspiration and insight is uh, really God reaching into your memory and grabbing a Bible verse or a word or something from your memory and giving it back to you and saying, Mike, here, this is what I want you to bless Nate with. <clears throat> if you uh, feel comfortable, you could also maybe look down at your Bible and read through a, uh, a scripture verse, perhaps. Maybe uh, two or three scripture verses. Maybe Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. And you can walk through that for just a moment while you're standing there listening to the Holy Spirit. Then once you've... Uh, oh, all during the week as well, the week prior, all during the week prior, you can be praying because you know you're going to be doing communion that, that coming Sunday. You can be praying about and asking God to give you a blessing for the people that you're going to be gathering with that weekend as well. You can ask God all during the week and as you're reading your, your, the scripture, you know, you can be asking God, Lord, give me something that you want to bless somebody with this weekend and show me who that person is. Okay? So you might also glance down and read through a, a short little scripture to, to uh, uh, maybe allow God to use that scripture to bless this person as well. And then lift your head back up, look back at the people and look at Christina, for instance, and bless her and give her the blessing that God has just, has just given to you. 
look at Nate and bless him with a blessing. Remember to make these things personal. Instead of, Christina, the Lord blesses you with. Make it personal. Christina, I bless you with, and then give her the blessing that God has given you. Less is more. You know, it's not something that you have to, has to be especially lengthy. You know, um, and then be very specific or as specific as you can be. Uh, let God give you that thing that he wants to bless that person with and then hand that thing off to that person. So once you've finished with uh, the blessing of the person, then you might ask them, you know, before we receive communion, is there something that you'd like me to pray for you about in particular? Is there something that, that, uh, that's going on with you that you'd like me to pray for you about? And let them, let them answer that question. Yeah, you know, my sister is, is going through this difficult time and she's sick and I'd really appreciate it if you pray for her. Or maybe something else is going on. Um, this is not necessarily a time when we are going to get into deep, safe place, formational prayer where we're going to start reaching in and starting to touch deep wounds and things like that. But God can certainly do amazing things as we are standing there and sharing prayer and sharing really His will in their, in their life. So when they do ask you, pray in faith. Pray in faith and, and expect something to happen as you're standing there. Maybe lay a hand on that person's shoulder. Pray in the name of Jesus and use the authority that Jesus has given us as we pray for that person. Jesus did indeed give us the authority that he has in order to pray for other people. So we need to exercise that authority while we're standing there praying for someone. And then pray with tenderness and compassion. Make sure that you're listening to the Holy Spirit while you're going through this prayer and let him lead you towards whatever it is that he wants to pray for this person. Keep your eyes open and watch the person. If you're laying, laying a, a hand on their shoulder and they've, you know, you say, well, let me go ahead and pray for you about that. And you lay your hand on their shoulder. You can look down for a moment so that they'll look down. And then pick your head back up and, and look at them and, and see what's happening with them. If you see something going on with them, then address them, you know. I see you're really emotional about this. Is everything okay? What's going on? Oh, you know, this is really touching me right now. I really appreciate it. Well, Lord, keep touching her. Keep gripping her heart, whatever it happens to be. Please don't shout, be aggressive, shake the person, speak in tongues. Uh, speaking in tongues is wonderful, but uh, unless there's someone there to interpret it, it doesn't do the, the other person. It's an edifying, it's supposed to be an edifying thing, and if someone is there to interpret it, then that's wonderful. Otherwise, don't speak in tongues out aloud. And then, once you've finished for praying, praying for these two wonderful people that are standing in front of you, Go ahead and take them through uh, communion, serve them communion. And you can do something like, okay, well, now that we've prayed for each other, let's go ahead and receive communion. And you can say something like this. You can take the bread, for instance. Father, you sent your son who gave his body as a sacrifice for our wholeness. Whoops, that's supposed to be our wholeness. Did you get this off the, the shared drive or the other one? Sure. Really? I thought I fixed that. Who gave, who gave his body as a sacrifice for our wholeness, we remember the body of Christ now. And then receive the, the bread, the body of Christ. Oh, I didn't hand out the uh, communion cups this morning. And then as far as the juice goes, the um, uh, you can pray something like this. You have your, your juice there in your hand. Father, Jesus shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Remission is the removing of a debt. To, to remove the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the debt that we have as a result of our sin. To remit or to take away that, that, uh, that sin. Jesus came to remit, remit, remove our sins. For the remission of our sins. Thank you Jesus. Remember the blood of Jesus now. And you can go ahead and receive the, the juice. And then simply pray to seal the work that God has just done. Both in the prayer time and in the communion time. And you might say something like this, Father, I pray that you would seal the work that you've done here today. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Pretty simple, huh? A lot of things there. You have it all there on your sheet in front of you, and um, you can walk through that just right there on the sheet in front of you. Let me grab one of these. Do you have an extra one of those? Can I just borrow this? Yes. Oh, that's where I fixed it. Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, 
So uh, Christina's concern there was, well, this sounds like it might take some time. Pastor Brady is, Pastor Brady is purposely building in anywhere be be between 10 and 15 minutes, 10 and 15 minutes in order, to, in order for us to celebrate communion. So as you're, as you're there celebrating communion, You'll have, you'll have at least a full 10 or 15 minutes to be able to celebrate communion. So there may be some, this may take some time, but it is certainly something that can be done in 10 to 15 minutes. And thank you, sir. And you can walk through that um, uh, communion time in that 10 or 15 minutes. He's purposely giving us extra time because he knows that we're doing it there in our, in our seats. So thank you for that question. Okay, so Arnie and Jennifer, would you come up here, please? This is Arnie and Jennifer. Here, come right over here. They're two table facilitators. Come right over here. There you go. Who's going to go that side? There we go. Thank you. So, I'm going to walk through and demonstrate this. We won't take you in this time. But you guys might open your communion cups and take that little wafer off the top. Obviously, in the future, you're going to have the, the little uh, piece of bread and the, and the cup of juice. But um, today, you, want, you might want to open that now so that you don't have to struggle with it when you're in the middle of uh, walking through this. And in the meantime, I'm going to walk through this demonstration. So here are Jennifer and Arnie and I, and we've just walked through, we've walked out of our, um, out of our row. And we've walked up and we've received the communion elements. Here you can hold on to those. Don't bother opening them. We'll receive it here. Let's receive it at your, at your, your table. We've received our communion elements. We're all standing here in the same row. And I turn to Jennifer and Arnie. And I say, hey, my name is Mike. How are you? Good to see you. Would you like me to lead us in communion this morning? Oh, you'd love that. Terrific. Oh, wonderful. Well, let's do, let's do just that. <laughs> yes. When they look at you and they say no, well, you might not. that could be an issue. <laughs> so at that point, I'm going to kind of squeeze in here. I'm going to kind of squeeze in here. And I'm going to figure out what's what's comfortable here as far as space is concerned. Are you guys okay with me right here? Is this is this, is this okay? In the world? <laughs> yes, Mike. Yeah, so great question. That brings up another great question, too. So there will be Sundays when, when Pastor Brady, instead of having us celebrate it at our seat, we will celebrate it, well, we'll celebrate it at our seat, but then someone up on the stage will lead us through. Obviously, if that happens, then uh, there's no need for us to walk through the simple prayer model here at our seat. Uh, Mike Bird asked an excellent question. Well, what if you run into, what if you turn to your side and you say, hey, would you like, that, like me to lead you through, lead us through communion? And Arnie is one of those folks who walked through and didn't feel uh, like he should receive communion that morning. And he said, well, I didn't pick up my elements. Well, then at that point you can say, well, is it okay if I pray for you while we go through, while the rest of us go through communion at the same time? And hopefully Arnie will say, well, yeah, I'd love for that to happen. That would be terrific. And I can add, I mean, this is a, a great opportunity for the simple prayer model to work with Arnie, who won't be necessarily receiving communion, but he can certainly receive God's grace and God's touch in his heart through this simple prayer model. Did that answer your question? So, yes, ma'am. Oh, questions. Wow, that's a great morning. So what she just what she just said. <laughs> so what she just said, here I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this, you ready? What she just said is uh, is uh, this is Kay Bisbee and she's wonderful. She said, now if I have my bread in one hand and my juice in the other hand, and I'm standing there and I how am I going to reach out and put my hand on this person's arm or shoulder when I, when I pray for that person? Well, what you do is instead of asking them for permission to put your hand on their shoulder, ask them for permission to put your foot on their foot. <laughs> you know, we, we, take the, we take the bread, 
we take the bread first. We take the bread first, so I would recommend taking that little cup and setting it down on your chair, perhaps. You know, the chair's a little bit slanted. I know, be careful, please be careful not to tip them over on the chairs, it'll stain. But you're gonna need to do something in order to be able to lay a hand on a person's shoulder, if you're comfortable with that also. So did that answer that question? Okay, John. Yeah, that's a great point. Yep, that's a great point. So look, at, you can take your you can take your juice there, and you can hold the the the, uh, the bread in that same little finger, and you can stand it like this, and you can pray for the person to put your hand. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, terrific. So, any other questions? Okay, so pay attention here for a second because you'll be doing this here in a moment. So, I establish a comfortable space here. Um, and then at that point, I say, well, let's take just a minute and let God minister to, to us for just a moment, okay?
to shed his blood for the remission of our sins. So Lord, we thank you for sending your son for the remission of our sins. And we remember Jesus now and the blood that he shed for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just pray to finish, to finish our communion service. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would seal what you have done here today, Lord. That you would bless Arnie and that you would bless Jennifer, Father. And I thank you, Lord, for the great things that you've got planned for them in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. It's good to meet you. God bless you. It's good to meet you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Wow, look at all the hands. <laughs> Linda? So that's an excellent question, and I don't know the answer to that question. You, you always know when, a, when a, uh, a speaker is being honest, when he actually says, I don't know the answer to that question. But I will tell you this, um, I know that, uh, I know that uh, this communion and the communion there in the, in, the, uh, in the congregation is something that Pastor Brady and the leadership team are looking at very, very closely. And we, we want to make sure that it's being done well and that, that people aren't being missed. So that is being addressed. I know that it is. I just don't know what the plan is right now. Thank you. You've got that compassionate heart. She says, I don't want anybody to be missed. Okay, so listen. Here's where you come in, Linda, and the rest of us come in. <clears throat> That's where we need to start looking around and finding those people that are being missed and including them as well. Yeah. Yeah, so Beth's question is, hey, I, I sit in one of those sections where there's one person way over there, one person way over here, and one person four rows behind me. What do I do with that? Well, you can, I mean, instead of receiving communion all by yourself, as, an, as the extrovert I am, I would turn around and say, hey, come on down here, let's do it. Hey, hey, come over here, here, come on. And we all gather together when we're running over here, and we all get together, and we do communion there in our little place. So yeah, I would definitely gather people together if, if possible and, and celebrate communion there. Hold on just a second, John, I see Cheryl. I can't hear you. Right, and, uh, and so the question there was, well, you know, what if that person, what if these two people that we're gathered together with look at us and, and say, and, and the, you were correct in thinking that this, this, what we're trying to do here is create community and, and help, help each other to kind of draw together. But what if I'm praying with these two people, Arnie and, and Jennifer, and they notice the imbalance that I've just prayed for them, I've blessed them, and no one has prayed for me. Well, you know, you could go to the point where you could say, and would you pray for me about this particular thing? But frankly, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, like, we, like I said at the beginning of the class, this class, we have 70 people here who now are being prepared or equipped to walk into the service where there's going to be 3,000 people who feel very ill-equipped to be able to do anything like this. So I think any our feeble efforts, God is going to bless. God is going to bless these feeble efforts of ours. And if we can navigate it so that the person, so that someone can pray for us at the same time, I think that's terrific. I, this is by no means something that you have to be held to uh, uh, specifically. John. Well, I, yeah, I thought while you were going through that, that one of the steps should be that um, open to let them know that I don't have to be the only one praying. That if anyone feels that God is speaking to them to pray about something, please, please. Enter. Yeah. So John was just saying he thinks that's a great idea to just you know open it up to the group and say you know if you, if any of you feel led to pray for each other or pray for me or or pray for somebody else, all of these things are great great suggestions and you can you can add to and change this format that we put down here uh, all you like to, so that it works best for you, Todd. The interesting thing about what we're getting prepared to do here is that this is going to happen every single week. You're 
probably going to form a little bit of a community around you, and really, we're going to be training them. So you may be taking the initiative to begin with, but very quickly, they're going to get the pattern of how this thing I love this guy, Todd Alvaro. I love him. So it's so true. What he just said was, you know, because this is going to be happening every week, and uh, assuming that we'll be doing it there at our at our uh, at our seats every week, we're going to have bit, probably the same few people around us each week, and we'll start out by walking through this and only praying for them and only blessing them. But eventually, it's going to come to the point where we, where they start learning what we're doing, and we can even start teaching them what we're doing, and they can start either doing it with us. Or they can do it next week with all of our little group, or they can go over and gather those two people together and do the same thing together over there. So yeah, that's a that's a terrific uh, uh, idea. Any other questions? Okay. Yes. You think I'm doing fabulous? <laughs> She's such an encourager. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate that. Okay. So I want to turn it over to you. We have. Uh, we have uh, we have a little bit of time. We have 15, probably 15 minutes or so, and this is a good this is a, a good uh, test actually to see how this works. Listen, don't don't be ashamed. Pick up that piece of paper and walk right through that piece of paper as you're standing there talking to these two people in front of you, okay? And um, walk through this process. I'll I'll bring you back at about 10 o'clock, and then we'll gather together at our tables and we'll talk about. How that went and what happened there, and then we'll dismiss. Oh, Jeff's got a question first. Uh, so, in terms of like space, for example, we are having a meeting in church, even if it's not to me, because I started sharing with you a little bit of my anxiety of the amount of time it takes to do something like this. So, then you reassured me something is going to happen in terms of time for me, and I hope to see that. Right. So, I looked at the service plan earlier, and Pastor Brady has set aside 15 minutes, as a matter of fact, today. Today, so today in service, after he finishes with his service, I don't remember the time that he's supposed to finish, but he's supposed to finish at a particular time, and then he's given a full 15 minutes for us to walk up there, receive our um, our uh, elements, come back, and pray with people. So if you take 10 minutes to walk through this process and pray with people and bless them, uh, that will certainly squeeze into that to that 15 minutes. Lynn? What if it takes 10 minutes to go through all the lines? Or sometimes people are just coming out and they're getting close to that time. Or they're coming out and they're Yeah. So if, you're, if, if, it's, if it's pulling up and it's getting short, well, typically Pastor Brady will watch everybody go through and, and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll let the, uh, the people go through the elements and they'll come back over and they'll stand in their, in their places over there. And we'll gather together in our in our little uh, spots there to, to start doing communion. Uh, and the, the band usually will part, play two full songs. Two full songs is going to be eight and eight to 16 minutes typically. So you're going to have a, a good amount of time. And if you come back, I mean, if you're in the back of the line and you come back and you're standing there and you see that he's just getting ready to start, well, then don't go through the whole thing. Bless the people. Receive communion. Do whatever you'd like to do. And by the way, this is the end of the service today. When, when when he finishes with his sermon, he's going to turn it over to communion. And then at the end of communion, at the end of the service at 1020, he's going to come up and he's going to say, prayer team, please come forward and have a wonderful rest of the week, everybody. Have a great day. Goodbye. And then off they go. So you can still be doing communion while he's, while he's dismissing the group. Wait a minute. Todd? This goes back to Terry Ward's thing. I don't know. If you only have this much to work with, then you weren't so okay with that much. If you have everything, Right. And God's going to be gracious with our feeble attempts. If you've only got a little bit of time to work with, then work with that. Do what you can. If you've got a lot of time to work with, then use that. Linda. Yeah, so the baptisms. There's baptisms today also. This is a, an amazing weekend, this weekend, guys. Uh, so there's baptisms this morning as well. But baptisms are doing, are, they're going to be doing the baptisms during the first two worship songs of the 11 o'clock service. And communion isn't until the end of the service, so no problems. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, so I'm going to turn you over to your tables, and you are going to do this demonstration there at your tables, and I pray that you have a wonderful time.
I saw people laying their hands on each other's shoulders. It was, it was really impactful, and I, and I appreciate you uh, uh, participating. One of the things, or a couple of things I wanted, I wanted to say quickly, as I was observing what was going on out there, um, I noticed uh, in, in a couple of different places, uh, I was sitting down at a table and talking about this very thing. We need to remember that um, Jesus is our intercessor. He is there at the right hand of the Father now, interceding for us. He also takes our prayers and He uh, cleans them up and He hands them to a Holy Father, to the Holy Father. So know this, your brief prayers that you pray for that person, or your, the brief few words that you say over the bread and the juice, is uh, impactful even though it is brief. It is, it is completely sufficient even though it is brief. Because you have Jesus living inside of you and you are taking that bread and you are blessing it and you're blessing the people around you, it is completely sufficient. So I say all that to say this. Please be careful when you are going through this communion time there in the and also the prayer time and the blessing and whatnot. Please be careful that you are being mindful of uh, time, mindful of how long you're praying for this particular person or, or whatever it might be. Uh, the general rule that I use is for prayer is long in private, short in public. So when I'm praying in my prayer closet, I'll stay there for 45 minutes, an hour if I want to, and I will talk with the, God, with, with the, the Father, and I'll discuss, and, and He'll communion, commune with me, and I'll do that for a long time. However, when I'm in public, I will shorten my prayers, and I guarantee you, because you are filled with the Holy Spirit, God honors our attempts at whatever it is we happen to do as far as prayer is concerned, and we, He uses those, and Jesus cleans those up and, and, and presents them to this Holy Father. So know this, please, when you are in your communion time, uh, wonderful if you want to go through a lengthy prayer, but be very careful about the people that, that you're there with and that you aren't um, pushing past a, a comfortable um, time of prayer with them and while, you're, while you're doing this communion. Does that make sense? Did I fumble all over that? John, was there something else we were going to talk about? I think I hit him. Okay, sorry. <laughs> all right, so preparation for the next class. Listen, you have just been trained and equipped to be able to walk into just about any situation and bless another person and pray for them and you have a tool now to be able to use. So use it. Use it at home. Use it during communion at church. Use it at work. Whatever it happens to be. Don't let this... I, I, I use this illustration in my, in my office. I've just, I've just handed you a tool. Let's say it's a hammer, okay? I just handed you a hammer. And there's a nail that's sticking in this table. And the object is for that nail to be driven into that table, okay? But if I stand here and I hold on to this hammer and I never put it to use, I never put it to use, then it doesn't do anybody any good. But if I take that hammer, that tool, this thing that we just taught you today, if we take that and we put it to use, then God honors our feeble attempts at whatever it is we do, okay? Especially if we're honoring Him. Uh, practice the simple prayer model at home or wherever you'd like. We'll do communion today after the sermon, and he's going to give us a, a good amount of time to be able to do that. Um, glance around and look and see how much time it looks like you've still got, and go through whatever you can as far as the, the uh, communion is concerned. Anybody have any questions before we finish? Okay, and I'm going to pray briefly in public, and I'm going to send you on your way. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity, Lord, to celebrate communion together. Thank you, Father, for the community that you build uh, here in this corporate setting, Lord, uh, so that we can gather together, celebrate the body and the blood of Jesus, 
and really, Lord, draw near, nearer to you, Lord, through this. I pray that you would bless every person here today, Lord. Give them confidence, courage, and the, uh, the uh, desire, Lord, to use the tools that you give them.